Governor Dean, welcome to the University of Albany. It's great to be here, thanks. Well, I understand you had a great day so far, and I think uh, the fireworks uh, will come later. Well, we'll see about the fireworks. I had a fantastic uh, meeting with a political science class, uh, political theory. You have some extremely bright kids here. Well, that's great to hear because political science is under me. Yeah. Uh, oh, so it was a great plug for Rockefeller well, College, right? Thing. right. Oh, you said exactly the right thing. Um, so you probably know that this speaker series, which is called the World Within Reach Speaker Series, has been designed and uh, conceived produced entirely by students here at the University of Albany. So my question actually to you is, what do you see as the role of students in, uh, in terms of civic engagement in the United States? Well, first of all, civic engagement is critical. I'm gonna talk about that tonight. Uh, this, this generation just elected their first president, which is extraordinary. More people under 35 voted in this past election than, than people who are, are over 65. So they know a lot about civic engagement. The most interesting thing about the way the lecture series is run is that students do do everything. And I was just thinking about what great training it was to be a body person for a political candidate. Uh, so there's a lot of hands-on th uh, things that are going on at the university. It's not just, uh, just academics, and I think that's great. Well, that's great to hear both about your impression in general and the university here in particular. Um, Students are always interested uh, to hear about the beginnings, of uh, political beginnings of public officials. And uh, my question is, when did you get started in politics? Um, I got my serious start in two ways. Uh, I was in Burlington, and I was very involved in keeping the waterfront, which was being redeveloped from an old railroad yard, open to the public. And we wanted a bike path along the shore of Lake Champlain, which we eventually got done. We just did it by organizing people and putting pressure on elected officials, both local and statewide. Uh, to get it to happen. And the other thing that really um, helped me a lot is I got very interested in Jimmy Carter and ran and, uh, and helped uh, do his election, uh, re-election campaign in, in, uh, in 1980. He didn't win, but I got to know a ton of people in Vermont. I got some mentors who were older than I who had been in Vermont politics for a long time who introduced me to a lot of people and that's kind of what gave me my start in Vermont politics. Some people are concerned that the United States, in terms of higher education, is losing its competitive edge. Uh, do you agree with that? And uh, what should the United States be doing, if anything, to, uh, uh, to compete more favorably in higher education, to make sure that our graduates are competitive in the world economy? Interestingly, the thing that's hurt the United States the most, uh, our educa higher education, is the Patriot Act. Uh, after the Patriot Act passed, it was much, much harder to get top foreign students into the United States, and frankly, it was a lot harder to get American citizens who happened to be of foreign descent into the United States without humiliating strip searches and things like that. And they discovered, lo and behold, they could stay in India, and they had a great economy over there, and they could invest there instead. Now, um, what I'm hoping is that uh, we'll be much more friendly to foreign students. We used to be the largest domicile in the world for, friendly, for uh, foreign students. That's not true anymore. Um, and we need to do that. That is, we are a magnet still. Our higher education system in this country is still the best in the world. Um, but we really lost a lot there and we need, to, we need to make sure that we attract the best and the brightest, not just from, uh, from America, but also from foreign countries in order to be this, have this continue to be the mecca of, of education. As you mentioned before, you and Carl Rove have been doing this debate at, a, uh, at several campuses and perhaps some more to go. Um, what have you been picking up from the questions, from the students, from the engagement of the students uh, at the various universities that you visited? Well, the students are still very much in Barack Obama's camp, and, and it's a very interesting phenomenon. The students were elected Barack Obama. As I said before, more people voted under 35 than voted over 65, and the young people elected Barack Obama. He's the first president of their generation, much as, if, much as though John Kennedy was the first of mine. And there's huge change. Uh, this, this generation is very different than my generation. They're not confrontational, particularly. Uh, they want to work together, and they want results, and they want bipartisanship. And they're not that Democrats, even though 63% of them voted for Obama. Uh, what they are is very inclusive, tolerant people who reject the kind of bigotry that goes on in some of the Republican rhetoric, about, particularly about immigration and gays. But they're fiscally more conservative than the liberal wing of the Democratic Party of my age. So they're up for grabs. Uh, but the Republicans are not competitive yet uh, for them because they've got to figure out what to do about that all that hate rhetoric on, on, the, on the far right. So I have one last question for you, Governor. Um, go back to 2006, perhaps, or 2004. Could you imagine back then that 
sometime in the future, you and Karl Rove would be on a speaking tour around the United States at universities and colleges? Uh, no, I didn't quite <laughs> imagine that, but it's been a lot of fun. Well, thank you very much, Governor Dean, for uh, your time. Uh, we look forward to the debate, and uh, I think it's going to be a spirited one. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you.